welcome back to my channel and in today's video um, I'm going to do something a little bit different to what I planned. I was planning to do a fabric haul video this week but unfortunately with the post all being a little bit messed up um, my fabric order hasn't arrived yet and I am out of fabric. I am at the end of my stash now. Um, so I have placed a fabric order but as I say the post is quite slow around here still at the moment um, and I have no fabric to talk to you about. Hopefully it won't be too long. Uh, before it arrives and then I'll be able to make a video and show you all my new fabric and what I'm planning to make with it. Um, but for now instead I thought I would do a video that shows you my Sew Over It top collection uh, because I really enjoyed doing my Darling Ranges collection video and um, yeah I thought I'd do a Sew Over It top collection one too. Before I get started talking about my tops I just wanted to say thank you to Lisa from And So On who gave my channel a little shout out on her own channel recently um, just recommending some new sewing YouTube people that she'd found and I think a lot of people came over from her channel to have a look at mine and if that's you and you subscribed and you watched any of my videos thank you so much um, I really appreciate it and thanks again to Lisa. Okay, so on to tops. Um, so first of all I will start with the most kind of basic pattern and that is the Sew Over It Silk Cami Top. Um, pattern and I've made two of these. Oh, the dogs just jumped up on my neatly arranged pile of clothes there. Um, so this is the Sew Over It Silk Cami, and I've made two versions of that. One in this kind of cotton crepe, which is a cream with a blue spot, and um, another one. This is my favourite one, and that's in this mustard kind of viscose twill, I think it is. Um, and this one just drapes so much better than the first one. I think it's just a better fabric for this pattern. Um, I really really like this and I like the colour and um, yeah the only thing I'd say about this um, pattern is that it's sometimes hard to get the facing to sit flat and I think a couple of other people have had that problem as well. Um, I don't know why, I don't know if there's something in the pattern or something to do with the seam allowance but yeah I did have to, on both versions I've kind of had to fiddle around a little bit with the facing just to get it to lie flat. I did think that this one, it was because it was a stiffer fabric because it's a cotton and that might be why, I don't know, but yeah, it doesn't iron quite flat and I don't know why. Okay, and on to um, my next kind of easiest pattern from Sew so Over It and that's the shift top pattern um, and I have made lots of different versions of this. These two are exactly the same. Um, this is the shift top pattern with the sleeveless version with the frill cap sleeves. Um, which I absolutely love. I really love these frilly little cap sleeves. I think they're so pretty and they just add something a little bit different. So you finish the inside of the top with a facing and then you attach the little frill sleeves afterwards and you just literally sew them on um, as an extra afterwards. And I think this is my favourite version. I really like this kind of, I think it's like a bubble crepe. It's really lovely and drapey and stripes and flowers are probably my favourite pattern. So really like that, that gets a lot of wear in the summer. It's probably one of the first patterns that I made um, from Sew so Over It. Yeah, it is actually. It's one of the first patterns that I made. I think that was the first pattern I brought from them. It is my white version. It's just from a white cotton dobby. Um, and the only thing I would say about this pattern and using like a see-through fabric is that you need to be careful about how your facing shows through because if I hold that up to the light, you can probably see that the facing shows through and I always wear this with like a cami vest underneath because it's a little bit too see-through to wear nothing under it um, and I get a very funny kind of um, facing line and then a vest line if I'm not careful <laughs> so I think if I was ever to make um, this top again with something as see-through as this I might think about bias binding the neckline um, if I could do that and also obviously the sleeves would need to be bias bound as well um, just to get rid of that kind of facing silhouette if you're using a see-through fabric but other than that I really like that I think it's really pretty in like a cotton dobby so continuing in the same pattern I've made the three-quarter length um, version of the shift top pattern um, and this is one of my most favourite tops ever and it's probably one of the first ones I made it's not even properly finished inside because I made it before I had my overlooker so I've zigzagged the edges and they're really fraying now, which is a shame because I really love this. Um, I love this fabric. It's really kind of drapey 
bubble crepe again I think um, and I can't even remember where I bought this from I think it was from a local shop um, but it's really pretty I love that fabric and I've worn this so much and it holds a special place in my heart because I think this is probably one of the first tops I used uh, like a fabric that wasn't cotton yeah I started to get a feel for how different um, different patterns could look in different fabrics and um, yeah I never want to get rid of that for this top for that reason and this is a different version of the same pattern again and this is the short sleeve version of the shift top um, just a basic uh, standard top with a keyhole opening at the back and a really pretty little button I really like keyhole openings and they're really easy um, really like this as well again it's not finished inside because it was one of the first tops I made and I made it before the days of my overlocker um, so it is kind of fraying a bit inside but I'm going to keep it for as long as it will hang on um, <laughs> all the washing and wearing that it's had because this has been worn quite a few times I do really like this one as well it's a really pretty kind of basic top pattern that one so I think this is my last shift top version um, so this is just the sleeveless version of the pattern um, with a slight peplum hack so I've just used the um, sleeveless version and used the facing to finish it off inside um, I think I shortened the bodice by about an inch um, and then I added on this peplum just a rectangle kind of gathered into the bottom um, and I do really like that but I do wish that I'd made the bodice just a little bit shorter because it's a little bit long still and I prefer I would have preferred it if it kind of if the peplum started about here so that it was a little bit shorter when it finished but um, yeah, it's my first hack of that kind of style so I'm pleased with it anyway and I still wear it and it's in a lovely kind of spotty double gauze um, which is really soft and really and I do have one more version of this pattern, um, the long sleeve version, again in a cotton dobby, a white cotton dobby. So with this one I've done a little hack on this and I've just done the long sleeve and then I've used the frill cap sleeve from the um, sleeveless version of the pattern. I've kind of put it into the seam of the sleeve just to give these little um, kind of cap sleeves, cap frills to the sleeves, I don't know what you call that, <laughs> just like a frill to the sleeve to make it a little bit prettier and give it a little bit of a, a different touch and I really like that, I like how it turned out, but yeah on the whole I'm really pleased with that and um, I like that hack, I'll definitely maybe try that again. And then this is my bravest, maybe my bravest, I've got one more that's quite brave as well, but this was definitely something different for me in a sew over it pattern. Um, it's the Pussy Bow blouse and this was one of my projects for Minerva um, and I made this in a chiffon um, and I absolutely love this pattern it comes together really quickly actually um, obviously with the version I decided to make in a chiffon it was a little bit longer because I had to French seam everything um, but if you were making this in a viscose it wouldn't take too long at all I don't think um, I really like it I really like the techniques it taught me um, first time I'd put in a cuff on a sleeve um, it has little cuffs really pretty this pattern I really like how the sleeves are gathered into this cuff and you get that kind of puff sleeve effect on the cuff and um, obviously yeah, it's just kind of bound with this bow at the neckline um, really pleased with that I haven't made any other versions of this but I would like to make a sleeveless version of it um, and just take it in at the shoulders a little bit and not put the sleeve on I think that would be really nice for summer and finally my favourite ever make and that is the Libby shirt from Sew Over It I really really like this um, I was eyeing it up for a long time before I was brave enough to make it and um, I'm so glad I gave it a go it was definitely one of the more difficult makes and definitely one of the more difficult um, ones from the tops I've just shown you but um, I'm so glad I gave it a go it's kind of is a 40s style I suppose um, the back is gathered into a yoke and then you've got a partial collar stand here at the back and then the front collar is a flat collar which is reasonably easy to put on I think before I made this um, someone recommended that I looked at the Sew Over It blog which has an explanation of how you put in this collar stand because that is a bit tricky um, and if I hadn't looked at that blog I definitely would have struggled so if you're planning to make this definitely have a look at the blog on their website which gives you sort of more clear instructions of how you put the collar stand in. 
it's quite short and I did the longer version and I am quite short so you might want to just bear that in mind but I don't really mind it I quite like it cropped and this fabric's from Material Girl Laura it's like a really pretty really soft drapey viscose it's probably one of my most favourite fabrics I've ever used actually just because it's so pretty and also it's lovely to work with so yeah that's definitely one I need to make again I just realised that I almost forgot to tell you about the top that I'm wearing and that is the Sew Over It Molly Top and this is from their first ebook, the Capsule Wardrobe ebook and um, I think I brought that ebook just for this pattern because I loved it so much when I saw it on Lisa and I thought I had to buy that and um, yeah, I didn't find it that easy to make actually I think I've made the wrong size, I think I need to go up a bit because it's a little bit tight under here and I did find the neckband very difficult to get in it might have been because it was one of the first jersey patterns I made um, but yeah I did struggle with this pattern a bit and the versions I've made since I still struggled with so I don't know um, I do really like the pattern that it's made I like the wide neck on it um, and I just love the curve as well the curved hem on the hip I think that's really nice um, but yeah as a top to make I don't know why but I always struggle I've struggled with every version I made of this um, it might well just be me but yeah I still love the look of this pattern it's just quite hard to make okay so that's it that is all my sew over it top collection I hope you um, enjoyed having a look through them with me um, I hope it wasn't too boring I know some of them were a little bit samey but um, I really like watching this kind of video and I hope you did too um, I would love you to like the video if you've enjoyed it leave a comment if you'd like to and obviously subscribe if you'd like to too and I will see you again in my next one